Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-ameen Wa alihi wa ashabi ajmaini la yawmiddin Dear brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu In following up with the series Of lectures on the life of Musa alayhi salam Wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally puts an end To Firon and Nizami Now a new chapter begins And inshallah in today's Tonight's episode we shall just scan over the favors which Allah conferred on the Bani Israel and at the same time we will also look into the behavior, the ingratitude, the arrogance and the disobedience and the crimes which the Bani Israel in turn committed. Allah says, Ya Bani Israel, Askuru Niyamati Allati Anamtu Alaikum Wani Faddal Tukum Alal Alameen O children of Israel Remember my favors which I conferred upon you. And I preferred you over the worlds. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered the Bani Israel from the tyrannical rule of Firon. He led them safely across the sea. But instead of being grateful to Allah, particularly having seen Firon and his entire army drowned into the sea by the will of Allah should have been a sufficient lesson for them to draw themselves near to Allah and to be more committed in practicing Islam with all sincerity. And they should have supported Musa salam and Harun salam in every matter which they were conveying to them. But shaitan is always there to influence people. Particularly when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows favors, we need to be extremely cautious. We need to know that these favors have been given by none other than Allah. We too, Alhamdulillah, are bestowed with so many favors which Allah has conferred on us. In Ta'uddu Niyamatullahi La Tuhsuha, Allah says, if you wish to count the favors of Allah, you can't count them. Infinite bounties Allah has conferred on us. And what is expected from the slave of Allah is gratitude. We as believers should glorify and praise Allah for having bestowed the greatest favor under the sky and that is Iman. But we see in the case of the Bani Israel as well, that instead of being grateful to Allah and worshipping Allah alone and thanking Him and glorifying Him, they immediately they start committing shirk. But Allah reminds them of these favors and says, Why not Jain Nakum in Ali Firona Yasu Munakum Sual Azab Yuzab Bihun Abnakum Yastahuna Nisakum Wafi Zalikum Balaum Mir Rabbi Kumazim? Among the favors which Allah conferred, Allah enlists them one after the other, and we see these verses in Surah Bakhara. When Allah says, and when we saved you from the people of Firon who were afflicting you with evil torment, slaughtering your sons and letting live your daughters, this was a great test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but He saved you. Further, Allah says, Why is Farakna Bikumul Bahra? Fanjain Nakum Wakrakna Allah Firona Antum Tanzurun. We parted for you the sea. We saved you and we drowned the people of Firon while you were watching with your own eyes. Third, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَإِذْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ وَالْفُرْخَانَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ We bestowed on Musa alayhi salam the scripture, namely the Torah, <coughs> as well as Allah gave him so many bounties and favors for your well-being and sent down so many miracles. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent almost this ayat in Allah says, nine miracles which have been highlighted and many, many more have also been sent. But Allah says, these were all some of those favors which Allah conferred on you so that your iman in Allah would become stronger and you would be on the right path and you would be guided. But what did you do? 
The moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summoned Musa al Islam for 40 nights to the mountain tour, you came under the influence of Samiri, who was a corrupt person. And he made a golden calf out of the ornaments that you possessed. And he influenced you, he corrupted your faith and, you, and he said that this is only your God which Musa a.s. has forgotten. Musa a.s. before leaving had left Harun a.s. to take charge of the Bani Israel in his absence. Harun a.s. put in his utmost efforts to, pro- to prevent the people from committing this form of shirk. But they would never listen. And they said, we will continue to remain devoted in worshipping this calf until Musa al-Islam comes back from the mountain tour. And we know when Musa al-Islam returned, he was shocked to see his people having resorted to shirk. He pleads to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them. And Allah accepts the dua of Musa al-Islam, Summa ba'asna kum imbadi mawti kum la'alla kum tashkurun. Allah says, We had destroyed them. We pardoned them so that they may become grateful. The same thing repeated even when Musa al-Islam took the 70 people to the mountain tour to receive the Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as per Allah's instruction. When they were returning, the people demanded that we want to see Allah openly. Lan numina laka hatta narallah jaharatan. On the way back, they demanded from Musa al-Islam, we want to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala openly and unless we do not see Allah openly, we are not going to believe in whatever you are going to convey to us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strikes them with a thunderbolt and they all fall dead. But Allah gives them, gives them life again in order that they may be grateful and lead grateful lives. So time and again, Allah has been forgiving them. Summa afona ankum. Summa basna kum imbadi mauti kum. These are the words which Allah uses in the Quran. We pardon them repeatedly in spite of all the sins they were committing. Is this not a favor of Allah? Allah gave them respite and gave them a new life. Even after that thunderbolt had struck them and they had all fallen dead. Is this not a favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wazallalna alaykum al ghamama. Wazallalna alaykum al manna wa salwa. Allah says. We shaded, we gave them a natural shelter in the form of clouds. They did not have any settlement at that point of time. Their only roof was the sky, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them natural shelter in the form of clouds. And He provided them food to survive through manna and salwa. They didn't have to work. They were getting ready-made food from Allah in the form of manna and salwa. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala later wanted to provide them a settlement and He said, you enter Jerusalem glorifying Allah and praising Allah. They came and asked Musa al-Islam, O oh, Musa al-Islam, we want water. Istisqa. They wanted water to drink. Fazri bi asakal hajar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, Musa al-Islam, strike with your stick on the stone. Then gushed forth 12 springs and they had copious water for the requirement. All these were the favors which Allah bestowed on them. In a, in a desert, Allah provided them springs of cool drinking water, provided them natural crowds, crowds as natural shelter, provided them manna and salwa. And the list goes on and on and on. Until it came to a stage when they said, Lan nasbira la tamim wahid, fadulana rabbaka yukrid mimban dubbitul arzu min baqliha wa qissaiha wa fumiha wa adasiha wa basaliha. They said, O Musa al-Islam, we have got tired, we did, we're eating only one kind of food. Ask Allah to provide us some variety in food. Ask Him to provide us green herbs, ask him to provide us cucumbers, ask him to provide garlic, ask him to provide lentils, babasaliha and ask him to provide us onions. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well you can get all that also provided you go to some town and there you will find all this. So a series of favors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala conferred on the Bani Israel and among the Bani Israel we know the largest number of prophets also came there to guide mankind and to guide the Bani Israel time and again. Such kind of favors were not bestowed on anyone before them. So Allah is enlisting all these favors. When Allah enlists these favors and narrates them in the Quran, it's a takeaway message for you. The takeaway message for you and I is that how many favors has Allah bestowed on us? Let's take account of it 
And as I said earlier, we can't count them. Except that we surrender to Allah altogether and say, Oh Allah, if not for these favors, we would not have been believers in the first place. You gave us Iman from the womb of our mothers. You showered your blessings by exposing us to the Quran, by exposing us to the teachings of Islam. We no doubt are sinners, but at the end of the day, you have conferred infinite favors and bounties upon all of us. And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows these bounties? So that we be thankful to Him. And what is the best way to be thankful to Him? Is to serve the cause of Islam. Is to spread the message of Islam. To behave responsibly. To behave responsibly. And to do things which Allah is pleased with. Now let's look into the other side. About the crimes. And the major sins the Bani Israel committed. The first and foremost. And the biggest blunder and crime which the Bani Israel committed was they committed shirk. They started worshipping the calf and they thought that this calf was the God, Nauzubillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells them to enter Palestine, glorifying Allah, praising Allah in a state of prostration and humility. But what did they do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself says in the Quran, فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَالَمُوا خَوْلًا غَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَأَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ الَّذِينَ Zalamu ridsam minas samai bi makanu yafsukun. Or instead of praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of seeking forgiveness, hitta tun nakfir lakum khatayakum. Instead of asking Allah to forgive them, they adopted arrogance and pride. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a punishment upon them on account of their rebellious attitude and their dis defiantly disobedient behavior. But constantly Allah kept forgiving them, in spite of all the crimes that they committed and all the sins that they committed. Further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they went on to even tamper with the scriptures. Yasmauna kalam Allahi summa yuharifunahu. They listened to the word of Allah, but they tampered it. They interpolated it. They put their own points into it and they ascribed it and attributed it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, Allah only has said this, nauzubillah. They denied the signs of Allah. They went on to even kill the prophets. We know, Hazrat Zakri alayhi salam, Hazrat Yahi alayhi salam were all killed by the Bani Israel. What more could you expect from a community which goes to this extent to even murder their own prophets because they considered their prophets to be a thorn in their flesh. This was the state of arrogance, pride and the moral deprivation which the people resorted to this particular community of the Bani Israel. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further also says they kept asking question over question whenever they were given any instructions. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi tell these people to slaughter the cow, they came up with all kinds of weird questions. What should be its age? What should be its color? How should it look like? Etc. Etc. And we find that narration in the Surah Baqarah. So they try to evade from the truth. And they were people who are always mischievous in nature, wicked in their outlook. And they harassed Musa al Islam to the core. They disobeyed him left, right and center. And they did not care for the Torah which was given to them. They kept breaking the covenants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We took the covenant from them and we raised over them the mountain tour. Allah said, you don't believe, I'll drop this mountain tour on your head. And what was that tower? La tushriku billah. And the list goes on that not you should associate partners with Allah. With the parents you should behave good and you spend your wealth on the poor, on the needy and the wayfarer. And you must remain and you must fulfill your promises. All these are the covenants which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from them. But each time Allah took a covenant, they broke the covenant. These were all some of the crimes which they committed. They went on into an in indulge in sorcery and black magic. This was an ultimate moral deprivation which was seen in their lives. They became so lewd and immoral in their character that they wanted to break up relationship between husband and wife in order that they may have illegitimate sexual relationships. And they used sorcery to achieve this. And even this particular narration is found in Surah Baqarah. So all these are some of those particular crimes which these people committed and they did everything by which Allah becomes displeased with them. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, you go along with Musa al-Islam and enter that city of Palestine, what did they say? 
فضحب دیٹ از دے سیٹ ان لنت خلاح ابد اما دام و فیحا وی ول نیور اینٹر اٹ ایز لانگ ایز دوز پیپل آر دیئر ان اٹ دے آر ہیوج پیپل وی آر نان ایبل ٹو کنفرنٹ دیم سو دے ٹول موسا علیہ السلام فضحب انتا و ربو کا فقات اللہ انہا ہا ہونا خائدون یو این یور گاڈ گو اینڈ فائٹ وی ول سٹ ہیئر اینڈ اونلی آفٹر دے آر ڈرون آؤٹ دین یو ٹیل ایس وی ول اینٹر دس واز دا کور ڈس آلسو وچ دے ڈسپلیڈ اینڈ ہاؤ مچ ورلڈلی لونگ دے ویئر They were not prepared to risk their lives. They were hypocrites to the core. They disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cared. They showed high disregard for the instructions given to them by Musa alayhi salam. They even dared Musa alayhi salam and said, You and your God go and fight. We are not prepared to come and fight. We are scared of our lives. To which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally sends his curse upon them. And we see that narration in Surah Maida where Allah says, The town of Palestine was forbidden them for them for 40 years. They were scorched under the sky and they finally the entire generation was wiped out. This was the curse which befell on the Bani Israel on account of their pride, on account of their arrogance, on account of their misbehavior, and on account of their rejecting the message of Musa alayhi salam, and on account of their killing the prophets that they became the most accursed community and were stripped of the leadership which they held. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is... giving the complete narration of the bani israel vis-a-vis musa alayhi salam's life in order that it may be a source of reformation and <clears throat> a lesson for you and i who belong to the umma of the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam the entire bani israel is a mirror image for us we need to look into the lives and correct us ourselves before we also tow the same line and the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam even has pro- has prophesied that my umma i am scared will also follow the same lines of bani israel may allah protect each one of us from them and all the crimes and the sins which the bani israel committed may allah protect each one of us and the more that allah has bestowed his favors upon us the more we need to love allah we need to glorify allah we need to praise allah we need to be thankful to allah we need to be grateful to him and we need to very importantly serve the cause of islam and draw near to allah and become ansar allah for this is what we as muslims have been sent into this world as a khair umma as a ummat e wasat and a shuhada ala nas may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to live our lives committed for the cause of islam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to obey allah and his messenger in all walks of life and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from coming under the influence of shaitan or corrupting our faith or committing any element of shirk in our lives for these are the most condemnable qualities which allah dislikes may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to live our lives in accordance to his teachings so that we may be successful in this world and the hereafter thank you so much for your patient hearing jazakallahu khair waqir dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa